Now the Surface Go is one of the most anticipated two-in-ones of the year, and a lot of it is because of the price. Uh, we're talking about $399 to start, although it does get expensive with the accessories, and we'll get yeah, into that. Quite a bit. Uh, this is Mark Spoonauer with Tom's Guide. And I'm Andrew Friedman with Tom's Hardware. And I think one of the most interesting things to start with is the fact that we gave this same device two different ratings on two different sites. So on Laptop Mag, uh, which is part of Tom's Guide, we gave the Surface Go three and a half stars. And Andrew, would you give yours? And on Tom's Hardware, we gave it an eight out of 10, so mm -hmm. slightly like a half a point higher rating adjusted. Okay. What I'm impressed with so far is the display quality in our yeah. review. The screen has, as all the Surface devices do, it's got a three by two aspect mm -hmm. ratio. Mm -hmm. I think as a tablet, that's excellent mm -hmm. because it just, if you if you do get the $99 stylus, mm -hmm. you know, it is just much more natural. It's like using paper or a book. Right. So I really like that. I think more productivity laptops should have it in general. So right. I'm really in favor of that. I also like the fact that you get the built-in kickstand just as you do with the yes. Surface Pro. So this, in a lot of ways, this is a mini Surface Pro, which is great because you get the same magnesium build quality, oh. right? So it feels sturdy, it feels premium. Especially for the price. Yeah, so at starting at 399 yeah, and it's right. super light, so it's 1.15 pounds yeah. before you add the keyboard, and even when you do, it's less than two pounds. Well, we have two different keyboards here, mm -hmm. which I think we should point out. So mm -hmm. the keyboard doesn't come in the package, mm -hmm. so you have to buy this separately. You have the polyurethane keyboard there, that's mm -hmm. that's about 100 bucks. This yep. is the Alcantara, the luxurious, <laughs> luxurious Alcantara keyboard. That starts at, that's at 130 in three different colors. Um, mm -hmm. I like the keyboard. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's not a great lappable design. The Surface Pro has never been a great lappable design. Mm -hmm. And the keys are pretty shallow. Like, you, you know, there's not a lot of travel, but I think they're really clicky. I think it has a really tactile feel. Right. And while the keys are a little close together for my taste, there's right. something we like, have less than a millimeter of space in there. It mm -hmm. was something I could get used to and I was able, able to type really well on it. What did you think of that one? Uh, I actually, I like the fact that it's backlit. Yeah, I do like that there is a little bit of travel, more so than there is on the butterfly keyboard for the yeah. MacBook Pro, and that's amazing given the fact that it's really just a cover. Yeah. So take note, Apple, uh, on yeah. that. And I think the other thing that's underrated, especially when you compare it not just against the iPad, yeah. but also right. the, the Samsung that's coming out, is the fact that you get a touchpad built in. Right. And that's completely underrated when it comes to using a tablet as a laptop. Absolutely. And it's also, it's a Windows Precision touchpad, so mm -hmm. it just works perfectly with all the drivers, mm -hmm. which is, again, something you often don't get on a cheap laptop that even, that runs Windows from a Windows partner. Yeah, and, and just in terms of the typing experience, I got yeah. about 70 words per minute, which is right. close to my average, but I got about 85% accuracy, and I'm usually closer to 95%. And to your right. point, a lot of it is because the keys are closer together, so there is a learning curve. Yeah, and the other thing, and I didn't have much of an issue with this, mm -hmm. though some people I showed it to definitely noted, is that mm -hmm. this top row, mm -hmm. they definitely shrunk it down. <laughs> yeah. So you, yeah. your function keys, your brightness, your volume, you have to get used to the fact that they are little, little tiny chiclets, but it works, it's backlit, which is really nice, mm -hmm. so. Well, let's talk yeah. about the configurations and performance because sure. that's the other difference between the systems that we have. So right. I have the entry-level model, right. which starts at 399 and for that you get a Pentium processor, yep. four gigs of RAM, and 64 gigs of storage. 64 and, gigabytes of eMMC storage, and that's yeah. a big part of the difference where mm -hmm. We here have the, it looks exactly the same, but it's the 549 with the same Pentium processor, mm -hmm. goes up to eight gigabytes of RAM and a 128 gigabyte solid state drive. Right. Um, in terms of benchmarks, I mean, we, I saw the benchmarks on laptop, mm -hmm. processor perform, performance largely the same. Right. The eight gigabytes, if you're, will allow you to open up a lot more tabs in Chrome, things mm -hmm. like that. So from, depending on how much productivity you, you want here, that's probably a pretty big deal. Right. And the SSD storage is just a lot faster than the eMMC storage. And yeah, it was a difference between like what, like 70 or 80 megabytes, megabytes per, per second. second. It's faster, it's more reliable, mm -hmm. and you get more of it. Right. Though the thing about storage for either of them is that under the kickstand, there mm -hmm. is a micro SD card slot. Mm -hmm. So if you need more space on either one, you can get it. Right, but, but the reason why I would probably go for the 549 config is because you get more storage out of the box, and even though you can add more via micro, U, micro SD, okay. Microsoft itself has said to us that if you're running apps off of flash memory, it's better if it's an inter, in, internal yeah. storage as opposed to, right. I guess if it's like photos or videos, it's different. Yeah, we had about, it was a little less than 20 tabs open. We started mm -hmm. noticing a little more latency than usual. Mm -hmm. It was also streaming a 1080p video from YouTube. Mm -hmm. and. So if, I'm, if I was using this, I could, I could see using this on a plane, I'm doing one thing, I'm focusing on it, I'm writing, an, you know, I'm writing a review, I'm writing an article, yep. and maybe I need a couple tabs open for reference. Right. I'm not sure I could see using this as like my everyday, like this isn't going to replace your desktop or your, you know, your work laptop as it is, but okay. for, for, you know, for a single-minded task, I could see it working right. out pretty well. Well, let's talk about one of my biggest cons, and I think it is yeah, for you too, well. it's battery life. And so on our battery test, where we simulate web surfing over 150 nits of yep. brightness, 
we got just a little over six hours. Right. And like the typical budget laptop is much longer than that, over an hour and a half longer. Right. And the typical tablet, and this is not your typical tablet, but just right. to be fair, gets closer to 10 hours. And the iPad, which the 9.7 inch was also closer to 10 hours. It's an issue for me because this is called the Surface Go. It's right. not the Surface Stay In and Charger. <laughs> it's not the Surface Stay In and Charger tablet. All right. So it would really be nice to see them put in a larger battery. Mm -hmm. I think the next iteration of this next year, that's the number one wish I have, is get this thing to eight hours. Right. I mean, on the bright side, it is a small power brick. And mm -hmm. another small bright side, which I actually didn't mention while we were on the positives, but mm -hmm. is that this has USB Type-C now. <laughs> so if you don't want to lug that power brick around, maybe mm -hmm. your phone's power brick will be able to give you enough power to top off a little bit. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it is a shame that it couldn't hit that like eight hour minimum we consider a work day. Mm -hmm. Which I think right. overall, if I were to compare this against the iPad, I might still give the edge to this over yeah. the iPad because of what you're getting for the money. Right. You know, full Windows. So it's Windows 10 Home on the consumer one. If you mm -hmm. if they sell this to a school or a business, mm -hmm. they'll have Windows 10 Pro and you mm -hmm. can revert it to S mode. Right, and, and Windows is right. just a lot more versatile. You get to download and use all the apps that you're used to using like Chrome. Right. Uh, it's not quite as good as an, as an iPad. I love the fact that there is a built-in touchpad. Right. The keyboard is a little bit better. Um, you know, the Surface Pen versus the Apple Pencil, like I love the fact that you don't necessarily need to, you know, you can just attach it to the side like that, yeah. just like little touches like that. Yeah, the, the Surface Pen also, I mean it hasn't changed much, but mm -hmm. the fact that you have a button that can you, you can use to call up the ink space, or the fact mm -hmm. that you can use the back as an eraser, or little touches that Apple hasn't mm -hmm. caught up to yet, so I do really love the Surface Pen for that. So bottom line, yeah. if you were to, if someone just came to you and said like, right. should I get the Surface Go, what would you say? On Tom's Hardware we recommended this for two people, because we, mm -hmm. we see these people, a lot of people who our site, they have a desktop or a powerful laptop. I say for one or two people. A, if you want a cheap laptop, you don't have a lot to spend, maybe you'll mm -hmm. get that model, or if you have a little more, you might get this model. Mm -hmm. You want it with some of the best build quality in the business. This right. doesn't feel like a Fisher Price toy the way a lot of sub $500 notebooks feel. Yep. So that's one way to do it. And the mm -hmm. other way is if you need a secondary device, mm -hmm. if you're going to be away from your big desktop or your big hulking workstation, right. then this is something you should seriously consider. Because while the iPad is great, and mm -hmm. iOS 11 did a lot to, you know, add, adding in and drag and drop and splitting screens, mm -hmm. it doesn't have the intricacies of Windows. So if you need that every day for your project, the Surface Go is really just an obvious recommendation. Yeah, and I think, that, you know, for me, the bottom line is that I think it's good for a couple of different types of people. One is right. business travelers or commuters or people who want a secondary PC, so just to stay connected, you don't need the full power right. of, like, let's say, like a MacBook Pro or something like that when you're on the go. And also students. I think it is a decent choice and an alternative to Chromebooks. Yeah. Um, even when you add in the keyboard, I don't think it's too expensive given the fact that there are a lot more premium Chromebooks coming out right now that are in the same ballpark, especially those that are two in ones. Right. Right? So make sure you go to Laptop Mag as well as Tom's Hardware for our full reviews for the Surface Go. Uh, for Tom's Guide and Laptop Mag, this is Mark Spoonhour. And I'm Andrew Friedman.